that is the main floor there. So once I kind of fluff it up and kind of break it from its adhesions, start to bring it out into the main main visual field area. Back with Jeffrey here, I've switched to, well, let's show it here. I've got a lens, contact lens, that has a mirror there, a mirror there, and a mirror there. That shows, actually, this is kind of interesting. This shows uh, what's called the angle, where the cornea and the iris come together. That, that little recess there is where the fluid drains out of the eye, so I don't get to see that very often. Now I'm looking directly at a dilated pupil and then the outline of the implanted lens in there which is just beautifully perfectly centered and I have to give kudos to your to your uh, ophthalmologist very nice job what I'm doing is I'm going to the upper upper um, mirror which is aimed down at the lower cul-de-sac because I think there is some floater material down there and I'm not seeing it let me see if I can Much. That's not it. A little something there. Uh oh, there we go. Okay, so this is um, has slid down and away from the lens somewhat. I'm gonna just do a direct shot on it this way, or actually indirect through the mirror. trickier because the laser is now coming through the lens at a very steep angle which should diminish the amount of energy but if you take your time and line it up you can actually get at it it's not moving around it's not moving quickly it's not sliding up next to the implant lens and um, and because there is an implant lens there I can work a little bit closer without uh, a shrinker tightening anxiety for fear of causing an injury to the lens because he has a piece of plastic in there. Now there's some challenges in here. Look down again, and then back to the light here. Some challenges in that it moves pretty quickly. Uh, but there it is. And I treated the, this is the left eye. I treated the, uh, I treated the right eye yesterday, and it had similar uh, windshield wiper, you know, dense strand that came up, but it was closer to the lens. So yesterday it would whip up very, very close to the lens and just sort of drop back down. This one actually comes up a little bit further away from the lens. I probably am gonna be able to get a direct shot on it rather than having to use the mirror, but we'll see. Okay, look down again, back to light there. And there's some other stuff. As I also just 
describing yesterday, um, you don't get an immediate understanding of the extent and the complexity of everything. It kind of reveals itself to you. So you go in with a, you know, kind of pretty good idea. Yeah, there's this ropey strand and, and yeah, you know, a little bit of white string in there. And then as you start exploring, there's just always so much more. There's these membranes and sheets and, and the, sh and the sheets are kind of folded over on themselves or clumped up in certain areas so they're denser. They kind of look like linear strands as well. I think the, the overall theme is there's always more than you think. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've asked the patient, how have you been functioning? <laughs> you know? So I think if I had this stuff in my eye, like I don't think I'd be able to do what I do. Like if I had to look past my floaters and try to deal with somebody else's floaters, I, it would be really challenging. That membrane, which is now kind of pulled away and folded over and kind of hazy and cloudy, it's like a diffusion membrane that you're trying to look through. Um, there's not a great measure for how it affects the eye. Um, there is, but there isn't. And that is uh, contrast sensitivity. So Dr. Sabag out of Huntington Beach, California, he um, measured that just having that membrane peel away on its own, not even talking about floaters themselves, but just the, just the presence of a PVD will decrease your contrast sensitivity by about 50% on average. That's a lot. How would that manifest? Well, gray on gray. You know, when the doctors check your vision, they put 100% black letters against 100% white background, highest contrast available, and, and they check your resolution and they say, well, great, you're 2020. And the patient says, yeah, but uh, it's not as bright, it's not clean, I don't know, I can't quite describe it. And this doctor says, yeah, but you're 2020. And the patient's like, yeah, but, and the doctor's, yeah, but. So there's a lot of yeah, buts going around. And they're kind of not quite communicating well. Because there just really isn't a very common language to describe um, contrast sensitivity. Look down again, back to lighter. I haven't seen that big windshield wiper. I guess maybe it's getting broken on this part. Okay, look down and left, back to light. You know, it's interesting, um, when we took that little break to switch lenses and chat a little bit and came back here to the camera, um, just before that break, I just had a feeling like, oh man, there's just a lot of stuff distributed all and that still looks kind of messy. You get to ride this roller coaster of, uh, you know, it didn't look too bad, and then you start fluffing that main one up there and kind of distributing out there, and you're like, oh gosh, you know, a little stuff in there and then we take that break and come back to it. it's like oh it actually looks better hmm. it actually looks cleaner and i'm and the other thing i think that may not come across on the camera here but uh, i'm seeing less of those membraney that membraney kind of material and i think that's why i tried to describe to you yesterday is hmm. just by kind of working in that central area and kind of chop 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 uh, stuff that membrane will kind of move out of the way it kind of falls so you may not be destroying it necessarily but kind mm -hmm. of moves out into the periphery and that central Central pathway is actually looking pretty good. So maybe there's a good place to stop. Um, now Jeffrey's coming back tomorrow because almost everybody needs at least a second treatment. So we'll come back tomorrow. It's the weekend. I'll come in and take advantage of the time that he's out here and, and do a second treatment on this eye. Hopefully we don't really need to do anything to, to the other eye, but we can if we need to. But, um, Yesterday's treatment to the other eye got us to his subjective assessment about 70-ish percent better, which I'm pretty, pretty pleased with for a messy kind of a treatment. I'm happy with that. And uh, I'm hoping for at least the same on this side as well. So, Oh, what do we got here? I've got a total of uh, 1,300 shots of the laser. Let's 
seems like a lot. It's kind of an inefficient process. It just sometimes it just needs that. And when I hear of other people who've gone to other doctors and they're like, oh yeah, I got treated elsewhere and eh, I don't know, I didn't really notice much of a difference. And I say, well, how many shots of the laser? And they're like, I don't know, 40, 50? And um, yeah, that's just not gonna cut it in a case like this. I don't think that'll cut it ever. I don't think I've ever done that, that few shots of the laser. All right, I'm satisfied with that. We're done for today. Get my lens back. You can sit back and recover from that.